Hey guys, Will here, and welcome back to another painting tutorial. Today I've got this Eldar Spirit Seer conversion that I'm going to paint up. Um, and before I show you what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about uh, about this model. So as you can see, it's the Metal Warlock model um, from my How to Strip a Miniature video. Um, and uh, as you can see, I've done a little bit of conversion work on him. So where his face should be, I've smoothed over all of that with liquid green stuff. Um, this is to create the sort of the appearance of the spirit seer, where they have the whole sort of faceless mask rather than um, rather than eye lenses, etc. And also, I've switched out his sword for this staff. Now, this is made in part from. Um, a high elf archer standard bearer for the middle section there and then the two ends are from the high elf mage from the old island of blood starter set um, and uh, yeah that's uh, that's what I've done to this guy so now I'm going to paint him up um, technique I'm going to use for this is similar to what I've used on my Eldar jet bikes but it's going to particularly on the robes going to focus more on um, layering rather than than fine edge highlighting so it's going to be something a little bit different um although still using basically the same palette also i'm going to show you how i paint these wraith bone parts like the armor there and the staff um so i'm going to head um oh, i'm going to go ahead and base coat him and for this we're going to use a spray primer this is um, green skin from Army Painter. I really like these uh, Army Painter colour spray primers because they, uh, they start to get some colour on the model straight away. I find with the GW ones you have to put two or three layers of the colour you actually want to start with on top of the base coat before you can even get to the colour you want, especially if you're trying to go for a, a fairly medium colour. Light colours over the white go alright and dark colours over the black go okay, but for a sort of a medium tone like a like this uh, warpstone glow that's going to be a, a key colour to this. I find the Army Painter colour primer is much better for that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back and then we're going to start painting him. So now that this Spirit Seer is um, nicely undercoated there with the spray, um, first thing I'm going to do is paint the robes in green. Now you might ask, aren't the robes already green, why do I need to paint them again? Um, basically this is because um, the um, Army Painter Green is very close to Warpstone Glow, which is going to be the main colour, but it's not a perfect match. So just putting a thin single layer of this Warpstone Glow over the top will uh, allow me to use that as the, the main colour. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right away. Okay, so now I'm ready to start um, really getting to work on painting this model. Um, with a model like this that's going to have quite a few different areas on it, things made of different material, whether it be wraith bone or metal or, or cloth, um, it's important to have a, an idea of what sort of order you want to paint things in. Generally, you want to paint things that are going to be quite messy to paint first, um, so that they don't mess up things you've already painted. So for this model, um, I'm planning to do mostly layering and ink washing, but for the wraithbone components like the witch staff and the rune armor, uh, I'm going to want to actually use a, an overbrushing and dry brushing technique, which is quite a messy method. Um, so I'm going to start with these. Uh, to base coat these, I'm going to use Citadel Base XV88, uh, this nice light brown colour, and that's going to act as a base for the, the bone effect I'm going for on these parts. So like I said, that's going to be the rune armour on the chest plate, and this staff here. Just base coat with those, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So now that the wraith bone parts are base coated, it's time to start layering up the colour on there. Um, and for this I'm going to use the same colour for both components, which is uh, this Screaming Skull from GW. Uh, this is equivalent to the old bleach bone paint, um, but I'm going to use very different techniques. So for the, the chest plate, if we just zoom in on that, you see that at the moment the whole thing is brown. But what I'm going to do is paint all the top raised parts of it, which is going to be mostly towards the front of the model. Um, in this colour, just a, a normal layer layering of that um, to uh, to give that a nice contrast to the darker recesses which will stay in the base colour. 
and that's going to be simple enough to do but then for the staff it's a slightly different although equally simple technique this is going to be over brushing so what I'll do is get a little bit of paint on my brush or you know a fair amount on the brush uh, but instead of adding water to it like you would with a, a normal paint you're just going to wipe off about half of it so you've just got a, a small amount of paint on the brush and then drag it over the area um, brushing it over to uh, paint the raised parts while the deeper details stay um, stay in the original colour. So this is kind of like dry brushing but with a little more paint because it's uh, an overbrush rather than just a dry brush. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do those and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay so that step ended up taking two coats for both parts but that's left me with a nice little result here. Um, as you can see both parts um, now have this bone colour but with the, uh, the darker brown in the recesses acting as the shadow. So to finish off this effect I'm then going to uh, dry brush it. For that I'm going to be using Palexia White which is the, the pure white dry paint from GW. So this, unlike the staff, which was an overbrush, is going to be a proper dry brush. So you get your, uh, your dry brush, dip it in the paint and then wipe off the vast majority of the paint, leaving just the, the smallest amount on the brush. And then just flick it over the raised edges of the various things and um, that will produce a, a quick highlight. Now, as you can see, this is already proving to be quite a messy stage. Um, for example here it's splashed onto the green this is why i'm doing this part first so we can then go back and neaten up once it's finished so that's finished off the uh, the wraith bone parts of this model and as you can see they are they're looking pretty good now um so uh, next up we're going to paint all these little um belts and bags and pouches um, around the waist of the model um, and to start this off I'm simply going to base coat them in Doom Ball Brown which is the sort of medium dark brown shade and uh, yes yeah, so that's going to be straightforward just carefully paint those. Um, at this point neatness is starting to matter a little bit more so um, you want to ideally not get this on the green parts because it's just going to make it more fiddly at the end. Um, I'm going to do that and then come back and show you what we do next. So as well as painting all the um, pouches and leather straps, I also painted this sort of fur bit. It's almost like a, a rabbit's tail lucky trinket. I uh, painted that in a lighter colour. I used the um, XV88 for that, uh, the same colour as I base coated the staff in. Um, next up I'm going to give all of these brown parts a wash. I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade for that and that's going to be on all the bits I've just painted, the pouches and the leather straps and the, uh, the little lucky charm there. So I'm going to give that a wash and allow it a good amount of time to dry. Now that the ink wash is completely dry I'm going to start um, layering up the colours on these parts and the first bit I'm going to do is this little like a lucky rabbit tail charm here. Um, and for that I'm going to start with an overbrush or possibly just a, a heavy dry brush with XV88 and then I'm going to do a much lighter dry brush once that's dry in Terminata Stone um, to create sort of a, a furry effect on that. So I'm going to do all of that now and then come back and show you what I'm going to do with the leather pouches. Once I'd done those two layers of dry brushing, um, I felt that it looked a little bit too light um, where I'd uh, applied the second coat was just uh, just too bright. So I've uh, actually given this a wash with Reichland Flesh Shade over that part there just to, uh, to dull the colour back down a bit and get it in more in line with what I wanted. Um, next up I'm going to start layering the other pouches um, and for this I'm going to go back to the colour I base coated them in originally, Doom Ball Brown. So I'm going to carefully layer this around all the raised parts just leaving the, the darker recesses in there um, in the, the washed colour. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the pouches, the leather bags, all these um, like ropes and cords, We've got more pouches around the back as well there. And uh, then after that I'll come back and show you how I'm going to highlight that. Okay, so now you can see that the, um, 
the deeper parts, uh, the recesses of the pouches are all still very dark, while the um, the raised areas are now this uh, this warm medium brown tone. Then to finish this part off, I'm going to give an edge highlight, and for that I was thinking about using XV88, but decided that's probably a bit too light. So what I'm going to do instead is do a 50/50 mix of XV88 and Doom Ball Brown. Um, with this, I'm uh, going to with well with mixing any colour you want to start with the lighter colour and then add the darker colour. Um, it's easier to um, darken down a colour that's too light than it is to try and lighten up a colour that's too dark. So I'll put a bit of XV88 on my palette, add the Doom Ball Brown and a little bit of water, mix them together, then if it's not light enough, or sorry not dark enough, then I can just add a little bit more Doom Ball Brown. Um, for applying that it's just going to be an edge highlight over the uh, the corners here, top of the pouch, um, and just the raised parts of these little things, top of the bag, a little bit around the bottom there, um, just to uh, to highlight it and make that stand out a bit more. So I'll be back in a few minutes once I've done that. So with the pouches all complete now, the next thing I want to work on is the shuriken pistol. Um, as you can see, it's uh, just a standard shuriken pistol on there, um, and I'm going to paint this black with the um, metallic parts in silver. So I'm going to start by base coating it in Abaddon black, and then picking out all the metallic parts in lead belcher. So I'm going to do that, and then come back and show you how I'm going to wash it. So you can see here that the bits I've um, picked out in the lead belcher are the magazine at the back, the sort of circular disc bit, and also this um, sort of uh, like top section. Um, so with that picked out in lead belcher, I'm now going to give it a quick shade in null oil. This is only going to be a fairly light shade. I don't want to darken it down too much. Just want to give it some depth. And then to finish off those metallic parts, I'm going to highlight that with a dry brush of Necron Compound. So now you can see the metallic parts of this weapon have got a nice shine to them, but the, uh, the dry brush has gone a little bit over other parts of the gun as well. So I'm just going to neaten that back up with Abaddon Black. And then I'm going to dry brush the black parts with uh, this colour here, Dawnstone. Um, I tend to find that for um, black weapon components um, like these, or uh, say the guns on my salamanders, dry brushing actually work with a grey over black works quite nicely for um, uh, for the highlight. I find if you try to paint the grey on using an edge highlighting technique, it's too bright compared to the black, whereas the dry brushing is just subtle enough that it, it works. And with the metallic parts, the grey doesn't tend to interfere too much with those because it's a very similar colour. You don't really notice it. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of that done and then come back and show you the next part we're going to work on. So that's the pistol complete. Um, and now I'm going to move on to working on the main robes for the model. Now this is going to be um, the vast majority of the bits that I haven't left painted so the arms, most of the back, shoulder pads, all this down here. The only things I'm not going to be doing in this next technique are going to be the head, the feet and the hands which I'm going to do white instead. So um, first thing I'm going to need to do is just rebase these. As you can see where I've been painting other parts I've uh, gone quite messy over here and a few other places so I'm going to rebase them with Warpstone Glow and then I'm going to very carefully give them an ink wash in Bealtan Green. Now with this it's going to be important not to get it on any of the bits I've already painted because I don't want to be uh, adding a green tinge to things like the the chest plate or the uh, like the pouches and that so I'm going to uh, do that a little bit carefully and then once that's dried I'm going to gradually layer up the colour and I'll be back to show you how to do that in just a moment. So washing it with Biltarn Green has achieved two things. Firstly it's darkened the colour down to give us this very nice uh, dark green in the recesses here but also it's acted as a guide to better show where the folds in the cloth are and that's going to be important as we come to do the, uh, the layering step. So for this I'm going to gradually layer the colour up from this sort of dark 
green in the shadows which is warpstone glow with bealtan green over the top of it and then I'm going to layer it up through pure warpstone glow, warboss green and then scarsnick green. Uh, with these colours, for this model I'm going to apply them all just as they are, just slightly watered down uh, without any mixing for um, an even better effect that will obviously take more time you can mix the colours so you would do warpstone glow followed by a mix of warpstone glow and warboss green followed by pure warboss green then a mix of warboss green and scarsnick green and then pure scarsnick green you could even do a very extreme highlight in a mix of scarsnick green with a little bit of uh, a little bit of white in there um, for like really fancy top level painting that would uh, give a really nice effect but for this it's going to take it's be probably too time consuming for the purposes of what I'm doing here so with painting robes as opposed to say painting armor um, you want a much more gradual transition of the colors so if I just bring in this model here which has some some very solid armored parts in my farcia you can see that the deepest recesses are Bealtan green. The vast majority of it is Warpstone glow with just an edge highlight in Warboss green and Scarsnick green on the edges. Whereas if we take a look at his robes, I've used the same colours, but they're much more um, gradual in how they transition. There's more of the deep colour, um, only a sort of a moderate amount, uh, sort of a moderate area of the Warpstone glow then a reasonable amount of the first highlight, the Warboss green, and then still a noticeable amount of Scarsnick green, so it's a much more gradual transition rather than these sharp lines that you've got down here. And mixing the colours between that would again give an even more gradual effect, but I say for our purposes doing it with the straight colours will be enough. Um, so yeah, first thing I'm going to do is paint on the, a layer of the Warpstone Glow, covering all the areas except the deepest recesses. Okay, so that's the Warpstone Glow applied. Now this actually took two coats to do, but I, that's quite expected with Warpstone Glow. It's the sort of colour that often requires two coats. But I was able to work this a little bit to my advantage. I don't know how well it shows on the camera, but... Um, basically where the first layer was not quite enough to cover the, sort of the darkness of the ink wash um, it sort of almost acted as a an extra extra layer uh, in terms of the highlighting so it's kind of left it a little bit darker and then I didn't apply the next coat over the full area just left a little bit of the previous coat showing um, particularly around the most heavily folded bits like down here so that's uh, already starting to look quite nice but for the next coat we're going to use Warboss Green and so this is going to be more of a, a highlight than a layer at this stage but we're still um, still looking to get a smooth transition so you're probably wanting about sort of two maybe about a third to a quarter of the area covered in this so sort of on every fold of cloth it's going to be like the top the top third or the top quarter that's been highlighted in Warboss Green while leaving a good amount of the Warpstone Glow still showing. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then come back and show you the final step. So now that next layer is applied um, I'm going to finish off the final part of the colour transition and that as I said is going to be Scarsnick Green. So this is just going to be applied to the, the very raised areas on the cloth. So for example these top bits along here, the top of his arms, and sort of a fine line along there, just where the light would would catch it. If you ever sort of want a, a reference to how this works, just look at you know your own clothes, perhaps where the sleeves are a little bit crumpled up, and you'll see that in the uh, in the folds, the um, it, it appears darker than it is, and then on the surfaces and the raised bits. The light catches it and that's really all you're doing here is replicating with paint uh, what light does to uh, to real cloth so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that now come back and show you how it looks finished and there we are the robes on this model are now finished 
and as you can see the very gradual transition up from a very dark green to a very light green helps to give them a bit more of a, a flowing voluminous robe look rather than what, a, what you might achieve with just sort of a, a single edge highlight. So I'm pleased with how that looks. Um, it actually doesn't quite show as well on the camera, maybe if I tip it slightly, maybe around the back, let's have a look. Yeah, that's better. So you can really see sort of the transition there and how it, uh, yeah, look, makes it look, look like cloth that's got sort of these natural shapes to it. Anyway, with that pipe piece done, um, I'm now going to work on the helmet. Um, and this is going to be primarily white with a black face mask. And so I'm going to start by base coating this in Dawnstone, which is this sort of medium grey colour. And that's just going to be carefully applied to the whole helmet, making sure not to mess up any of the robes that we've already done. And the next stage will be to simply paint in the, um, the clear face mask, and that's going to be using Abaddon Black. So just going to paint that in a smooth layer over the whole of the slightly recessed face mask area. Okay, so I've um, painted the face mask black and I've also at this stage base coated the gloves and the shoes in um, Dawnstone as well because they're going to be the same colour as the helmet and now I'm going to start layering these parts. For this I'm going to use Ulthuan Grey, the almost white colour um, that makes a really good job of, uh, of painting something that's meant to look white because as I've said in previous videos very few things are really true white um, instead they just look white because they're very close to it and using this almost white tone allows us to then highlight in a proper white so you still got some edging there so for this i'm um, going to layer it over the whole helmet just leaving the deepest recesses in the original color there's going to be things like um, in there where the helmet joins the lower neck piece around these parts here the recesses by the face mask and also around these gems so they're going to stay gray everything else is going to go this sort of this much lighter Ulthuan gray um, on the hands it's going to be all the fingers just leaving the gaps in between the fingers um, gray and on the shoes it's pretty much going to be pure Ulthuan gray just where there are some little folds there leaving the dawnstone in like that so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, and as you can see, that has uh, given us quite a nice almost white colour on those parts, the hands, the head and the feet. Now I'm going to finish that off with a highlight of pure white. But before I do that, I want to do the other colours on the model and leave the white till absolute last of this model. So um, the areas I'm going to be working on next are the gold. And although the model doesn't have a lot of gold in it, there's a lot of small bits that I want to do gold. You see around each of these spirit stones um, hanging from his belt, the ones on his staff, on his head, etc. And the main one in the middle of his chest. I want to... Um, have the rim of that in gold so to start off with because gold itself doesn't work very well as a base coat it tends to uh, leave a bit of a patchy effect I'm going to base coat those parts with tin bits uh, it's an old sort of very dark brown metallic sort of color from GW I think there is a, a new version of that out but I honestly couldn't tell you what the name of it was but I'm sure you find it on the GW website and uh, so I'm going to paint in all of the um, the spirit stones in that. Now, um, you only need to get the outside of it done, but because we're going to fill in the middle with um, a red colour later on, it doesn't really matter if you get that um, on the middle part of it at this stage, because that's going to get painted over anyway. So I'm going to base coat that and then show you how we're going to build up the gold. Okay, so I've base coated all the gold parts in tin bits. A couple of bits I forgot to mention when I was uh, doing the previous bit. I also did this little like face up here in the top of the staff and also the little gold symbol on his pouch there. Um, so now that's base coated, we want to actually start making it look gold. So for that, I'm going to use this color here, shining gold. Again, this is one of the old GW colors. Um, there is a modern equivalent, but I can't remember the name. Um, and this I'm going to paint over all the bits I've just done in tin bits, just leaving the very edges um, around the side of most of these uh, 
most of these uh, little gold areas done so it's going to be look mostly this colour with just the tiniest hint of shade from the tin bits. On the face it will probably be a little bit more noticeable because the eye sockets I'm obviously going to leave leaving the darker colour but I'm going to do that and then show you the next highlight. So next up I'm going to highlight these gold parts with Auric Armour Gold, it's a, a brighter lighter shade of gold and for this I'm mainly going to be focusing on just the uh, the edges of the the little gold casings that each of the gems are in and also uh, the raised surfaces on the other gold details um, particularly focusing more towards the top of the model where the light would catch and although this does seem like a um, somewhat long-winded way to do gold because I've got one more highlight left to do after this particularly considering how small these areas are I find it gives the gold a really nice shine and makes it uh, makes it look really good so uh, yeah I'm going to go ahead and do that now. The final highlight for these gold areas is going to be with Rune Fang Steel. Um, now this may seem uh, a little bit strange where we've been working very much in very gold colours to switch to a steel tone but this is uh, really just sort of a, a little flick of this just to give it a real shine. This is probably the brightest metallic that GW do and just a little flick of that on the most raised surfaces of the gold parts will really give it a, a nice shine. Okay so that's the gold bits done now and as you can see they're looking nice and shiny but the uh, the middle bits where the spirit stone is going to be are probably still a bit messy at this stage but that's all right because we're going to uh, paint over those in a minute. Um, this is one of three methods I have to paint gold and I find this one works really nicely for very small bits of gold done late in the painting process because it doesn't require any ink washes or any dry brushes it's straight up layering um, which means you've got no risk of getting the uh, paint on other parts of the model. Um, anyway to do the spirit stones which are going to be the next stage I'm going to start by base coating them in core red and at this point it's important to get good coverage over the whole stone but without getting it onto any of the gold trim because you don't want to spoil what you've just done with the gold. Okay so now I'm going to show you how to turn this from just uh, looking like a blob of red paint on the front of the model to actually having a, a quality that makes it look a little bit like a gemstone. First colour I'm going to need for this is Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm going to paint this over approximately um, three quarters of the model, uh, sorry, three quarters of the gemstone, not three quarters of the model, uh, and that is going to be focused sort of coming from the bottom right, just leaving the top left and a little sort of ring around the edge in the original colour. Um, the overall effect I'm looking for is something like this. I've just quickly sketched out on card. You may have seen this if you've seen some of my other tutorials, um, and so as you can see, the um, the brighter red is over the vast majority of it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Next up I'm going to paint a little curvy line of orange in the bottom right hand corner um, and this is uh, again as per the little uh, scheme I've got going on here. So a little curve of orange in the bottom right corner to give it some three-dimensionality to the paint scheme. I've just zoomed in here to uh, give you a better look at that and as you can see that's starting to look quite nice and then I'm just going to finish it off with a little dot of white in the far top left corner um, just where the the light would naturally reflect off and there we go all the gems are now complete and you can see with this fairly straightforward technique it's produced a quite a nice little effect that makes them really stand out if I zoom out for a second you'll see that yeah you know those bits uh, have sort of a standing out glowing quality to them. So the final bit I want to do before I work on the, the final edge highlight is the crystal ball up at the top of the staff here and for that I want to have it in a very dark blue colour um, for the most part sort of representing the sort of the darkness of the Spirit Seer's, uh, Spirit Seer's work with sort of the, the dead and the spirits. So um, for that I'm going to base coat it first in this colour here going to be Necron Abyss. This is one of the old foundation paints. I believe the closest modern equivalent is Cantor Blue. So I'm just going to very carefully base coat that whole sort of crystal ball thing in this colour. 
Okay, so I want to keep this looking pretty dark, so I'm only going to do some fairly small highlights on there, representing the sort of the swirling energies in there. Um, to start up with, I'm going to go for Mordian Blue. I'm just going to paint the highlights probably sort of one crescent line on either side, one towards the top, um, probably do one towards the top at the front and one towards the bottom at the back, um, just to give sort of a um, like a feel of this having these sort of strange energies inside there. Next up I'm going to paint a slightly smaller crescent within that crescent and in a lighter colour and that's going to be Teclis Blue um, and then I'm going to repeat that with an even lighter colour on an even smaller crescent in a crescent in Baharoth Blue. And then to finish it up just give it a final little highlight of a very thin line of Ulthwan Grey within the crescent that you've already done. Okay, so we are pretty much finished now. It's just a couple of little finishing touches I want to do to the model. Firstly, I need to edge highlight the white pieces. Now I've deliberately left this to absolute last so they didn't get dirty as I painted other parts of the model because it's easier to um, mess up white than it is perhaps some other colours. It's uh, needs to be a very pure colour. Um, to highlight these I'm actually going to be using this uh, Vallejo colour, it's the Dead White from their game colour range. Uh, this is pretty much the same colour as Citadel Skull White or um, White Scar as it's called now, but I find that the White Scar tends to dry out in the pot really easily. I never actually finish a bottle of it, I end up uh, um, throwing it away when it's got about two thirds still in it because it's just dried up and gone manky. I don't tend to see this with the other Citadel paints but the uh, the white scar tends to do that. So I'm trying this Vallejo colour out, see if I have better luck with that. Um, and that will finish off the painting of the actual model. Now the bits I'm going to highlight obviously are the, the sharp edge around the eye lenses here, the fingertips, tips of the feet, and also do some feathering from the top of the cre the helmet and so these little um, oh, like uh, lines around the back here that form part of the helmet so that's going to all be edge highlighted in white then to finish him off I'm going to base him in my normal uh, basing scheme uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video because I've already got a whole video out there and I'll put a link in the description to that and then once all that's finished our spirit seer will be done and there we go, there's the Spirit Seer completely painted and based. As you can see now the white's looking nice and crisp with that edge highlight. And uh, yeah, he's uh, looking like a pretty nice model. I'm just going to turn him around and show you what he looks like from the back. See the back, you can, you can see really the flow of the robes really nicely on the back because there's not so much stuff getting in the way of it. And uh, yeah, I'm pleased with how this guy's turned out. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions or comments then Feel free to leave them in the comments section below and if you like this video then please leave me a like. Thanks a lot. Bye.